A philosophic system is an integrated view of existence. As a human being, you have no choice about the fact that you need a philosophy. Your only choice is whether you define your philosophy by a conscious, rational, disciplined process of thought and scrupulous logical deliberation, or you let your subconscious accumulate a junk heap of unwarranted conclusions, false generalizations, undefined contradictions, undigested slogans, unidentified wishes, doubts and fears, thrown together by chance, but integrated by your subconscious into a kind of mongrel philosophy, and fused into a single solid weight, self-doubt. Like a ball and chain in the place where your mind's wings should have grown you might say, as many people do, that it is not easy always to act on abstract principles. No, it is not easy. But how much harder is it to have to act on them without knowing what they are? Your subconscious is like a computer, more complex a computer than man can build, and its main function is the integration of your ideas. Who programs it? Your conscious mind. If you default, if you don't reach any firm convictions, your subconscious is programmed by chance, and you deliver yourself into the power of ideas you do not know you have accepted. But one way or the other, your computer gives you printouts, daily and hourly, in the form of emotions, which are lightning-like estimates of the things around you, calculated according to your values. If you programmed your computer by conscious thinking, you know the nature of your values and emotions. If you didn't, you don't. Many people, particularly today, claim that man cannot live by logic alone, and there's the emotional element of his nature to consider, and that they rely on the guidance of their emotions. Man's values and emotions are determined by his fundamental view of life. The ultimate programmer of his subconscious is philosophy, the science which, according to the emotionalists, is impotent to affect or penetrate the murky mysteries of their feelings. The quality of a computer's output is determined by the quality of its input. If your subconscious is programmed by chance, its output will have a corresponding character. You have probably heard the computer operator's eloquent term, GIGO, which means garbage in, garbage out. The same formula applies to the relationship between a man's thinking and his emotions. A man who is run by emotions is like a man who was run by a computer whose printouts he cannot read. He does not know whether its programming is true or false, right or wrong, whether it's set to lead him to success or destruction, whether it serves his goals or those of some evil, unknowable power. He is blind on two fronts, blind to the world around him, and to his own inner world, unable to grasp reality or his own motives, and he is in chronic terror of both. Emotions are not tools of cognition. The men who are not interested in philosophy need it most urgently. They are most helplessly in its power. The men who are not interested in philosophy absorb its principles from the cultural atmosphere around them, from schools, colleges, books, magazines, newspapers movies, television, etc., who sets the tone of a culture? A small handful of men, the philosophers. Others follow their lead, either by conviction or by default. For some two hundred years, under the influence of Immanuel Kant, the dominant trend of philosophy has been directed to a single goal, the destruction of man's mind, of his confidence in the power of reason. Today, we are seeing the climax of that trend, when men abandon reason, they find not only that their emotions cannot guide them, but that they can experience no emotion save one, terror. <laughs>